and welcome to another episode. Today we are continuing a little bit the line of last week's video where I talk how to use Amplify with CDK, why you should use them together, and I will do that similar thing with Amplify and Sum. Because I'm pretty sure that after that video goes out, I haven't published that video yet when I'm filming this, but I'm pretty sure people will ask me, and how I do it with Sum? Well, this is how you do it with Sum. If you don't know why to use Sum and Amplify together, you can watch that video on Amplify and CDK. The principles are the same. Basically, you want to have your Amplify application done by your front-end developers and you want to have your back-end done by your back-end team and you want that they integrate in a way that is kind of programmatically and not by you sending URLs around. <laughs> so in this video, I will show you how to do that. So let's go directly to the code. This is a short intro because I have intro it in the other video. So go and watch that one. I have this app that I created in the previous video as well. This is a basically create React app with the app.js change as well. The code is in the link uh, in the description box. And here we have a app that has one button that calls a Lambda function. Nothing rocket science. And this Lambda function is just uh, getting the link for the Lambda function from an environmental variable. And then the interesting thing this web application has is this Amplify YAML file where we have all the script for building this application. So that's kind of the only interesting thing. The only weird thing my front end has is this build script for Amplify. There we will define the environmental variables that need to hook from the back end to the front end. So this application, I already push it to Git, imagining I have my client team working on it and it's there on GitHub. That's, that's kind of it. So it's there. So now let's go and do the backend. So now I have this application on GitHub and it's ready, imagine that the frontend team is working on it. One other thing that you want is to have your uh, GitHub token. So I have shown you also in the video on the CDK and Amplify how to get this token. is a token that you need in order to be able to deploy and do things uh, from GitHub. So the GitHub token is something part of the developer settings. Go and get it and put it in your secret manager. So there it is with the name GitHub token or the name you like. But if you change the name, then the code you get from GitHub might fail. So good. Now we are ready to go to make the backend application. So I will make a new directory called make dir amplify some infra. And here I will put my some application. I get into that, open it in Visual Studio Code as always, and create a template YAML. For the first part, we only need a template YAML because we will not have any Lambda function. I want just to show you how you can define an Amplify application using kind of cloud formation notation, basically, uh, because there is no shorthand syntax for Amplify and um, some. So this uh, is a resource from cloud formation. Because I want this to be a uh, for you that you can download and very dynamic, I will create a parameter that you will need to kind of put when you're deploying this application, the GitHub repository, that is the URL to the GitHub repository that has your web application. So the one I show you. And there I will start defining the first resource that is the Amplify application. And in here is very, very, very similar to the CDK version. We have the name of the application. This is what you will see in the Amplify console. We have the repository. This is a reference to the parameter. We have the access token. This is a reference to the secret manager uh, GitHub token that we have in our secret manager. So this is how you integrate some with secret manager. And then we have a role that we are going to define in a second. Here is our role. You can copy paste it. It's basically uh, getting the, the permissions needed for doing what we are going to do. So just copy paste it. It will work for you. Next thing we need to define is the Amplify branch. We also did that for the CK. It's telling um, Amplify which branch you want to basically create a front end for. You can have multiple if you need uh, different stages in your Amplify application. So. In this case, we only have main, so we are going to just go with that. So main is the branch for my application. Good, 
And here we have everything that we need to build our application. Uh, so we can do some deploy that's just guided and deploy this. This should create our some application and you need just to put the uh, different parameters into the some configuration and the GitHub repository, don't forget that one. And then I will fast forward until this is done and I see you in the other side. So when this is completed, we go to the um, console. We can see the CloudFormation there. We go to the stack that we just deploy. We open the resource tab and there we can see that an Amplify application has been created, the role and branch and everything. Good job. <laughs> so now if we go to Amplify, we should see this application there. Uh, it should be the last one. So we can see it there, the SAM uh, demo app. And we can see that the front end is in the queue to build deploy. So we just click there and we wait for the deployment to happen. This will be using the Amplify YAML that we have put in our front end. There is also a way that we can add that Amplify YAML uh, information in embedded in our SAM template. I prefer to put it in the front end. So then we can have it <laughs> simpler. So this is something, if you have multiple front ends like iOS, Android, or something like that, then you don't need to have these kind of uh, very specific things inside your uh, application. So let's fast forward until this is deployed. And when this is deployed, then the link that is in that screen will be available for us. So we can click on it and we can see that our application is deployed. Don't click there, don't click in that button. It's not working yet. We don't have a Lambda function. So let's go and build a Lambda function so we can try that button. So I will be building a Lambda function with an API gateway and no rocket science there. It's a function that it has an API gateway with course enabled like we did with CDK. It's a node 14 function, my first node 14 function with Sam, yeah! <laughs> I think they added like a few uh, days ago. The support for that in Sam. And then we have uh, the trigger that is an API gateway, path uh, hello method get, nothing weird. And then we will basically put the output so we can verify that uh, the URL that we are calling is correct. And don't forget to add this um, endpoint from the API gateway as an environmental variable to your Amplify application. So using the environmental variable is how your backend and your frontend will talk to each other. And now we are basically adding this environmental variable with the stage of the API gateway. And this is also very dynamic. So it's not attached to any stage. So. This is pretty nice. I'm also created a parameter for the stage. So whenever you are deploying these in different stages, you can uh, define it there. So good. Now we have uh, our environmental variables. We have our um, project. And if you see in your Amplify application, in your front end application, whenever you're calling these uh, environmental variables, they are called React app endpoint or react app, whatever is the name of the environmental variable. And this is because it's a react application for view. You will have to do and think view app and for other platforms, maybe you have to do different things. And this is something very specific for the front end. That's what I like to have the amplify YAML, not in my backend. So it's not, uh, it's not there. So if you see the amplified YAML, uh, for this front end application, you will see that we have echo react at endpoint and then is equal the endpoint <laughs> and then we are putting that in the emb, uh, in the environmental variables of this uh, react application so now after we have defined the infrastructure the lambda function the api gateway we have put the environmental variables into our sum let's add um, a function a handler some code so it does something <laughs> and i will just add the same as i did in the cdk example a very crazy hello <laughs> hello hello something very original you know as always and then we're ready to deploy and see it in action so i deploy and i see you after it's deployed
One thing to have in mind when you're deploying, don't forget to add the stage, the dev or prod or whatever you like. So that's important. So add it into your parameters. You might need to run the some deployed para, uh, dash dash guided again. If not, then just add it into your uh, serverless uh, configuration file. Good. Now we have an endpoint. We have everything ready, we can go to our application. Here, uh, you might need either to uh, redeploy your frontend, so it grabs that environmental variable or refresh the page. So if it doesn't work refreshing, redeploy it because maybe the, um, sometimes, depending on how many steps you do this, sometimes the environmental variable is not there at all and it's just calling some potato land. So you might need to just redeploy the application. So if we call the Lambda function, it returns hello. We can inspect the code and see that we are uh, calling the, the Lambda function. That is the same endpoint that we get in our output of the sum application. And then if we go to the Amplify environmental variables configuration, we can see that there it is. So this is great. Now our front end, our application are not really tightly together. They are just connected by these environmental variables. Everything is very flexible and amazing. That's the video I have for you today. If you like it, give a big thumbs up, share with your friends, subscribe and all that chabang, YouTube likes, and I see you in the next episode of Ubar. Ciao, ciao.